Today we're going to be looking at how we can hold on to hope in the face of fear. Now this year has provided lots of things for us to be fearful of that will cause us to be afraid. Um, as well as all our usual worries and stresses, we can add the fear about our health and looking after one another and staying safe, having to be at home in order to protect ourselves and those that we love. And we've got the fears of um, our work and providing, uh, fear of for our children who have had so much disruption to their education and, and their social lives as well as our social lives and, and the things that we would usually do. Um, there's been so much fear surrounding this year um, in general if there's been so much uncertainty. We see a real tangible fear described in many places throughout the Psalms and I'm going to read some verses from Psalm 55 and 18 which you might be able to empathise with. But if you don't feel that you are particularly afraid at the moment, um, that's fantastic. Um, again, I would really encourage you to think of someone who you know is fearful, who is afraid, who is really anxious about the days ahead um, or perhaps just the current situation and is finding it really, really difficult to um, let go of those fears and find hope in the face of the fear. Um, so hold them before God as we read these passages um, and let's discover together how we can hold on to hope in the face of fear. So I'm going to start by reading Psalm 18 verses 4 and 6 in which um, David kind of describes his incredible fear in the face of, of danger and what it really feels like from his point of view. The cords of death entangled me and the torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled round me. The snares of death confronted me. And from Psalm 55 verses 1 to 5. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me and I am distraught. At the voice of the enemy, at the stairs of the wicked, for they bring down suffering upon me and revile me in their anger. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death assail me. Fear and trembling have beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. First, and like David, let's, let's acknowledge our fear and distress. Um, it's important that when we express and acknowledge our fear that we understand how it affects us. The psalmist David describes the sensation of being overwhelmed by distress. Um, and the words that are in that psalm, particularly 55, fear, trembling, terror and horror. The fact that they overwhelm. These are not the words of someone who's trying to keep a stiff upper lip um, and mask their feelings. This is an, it's an outpouring and it's important and good for us that we also pour out our hearts and fears to God too. You might want to do that in, in a physical way. Um, perhaps you could write your own psalm describing your fears, describing um, and expressing the way that it makes you feel, um, if you're creative in that way. Or you might just simply want to write down on paper, bring your fears before God um, and just lay them down before him in a way that is physical. Um, psalm 27 encourages us to seek his face. So we've, we've acknowledged our fear, we've kind of put it before God, whether um, in a physical way on a piece of paper or just perhaps in our hearts in a prayer. We've acknowledged the fear is, is all-consuming and it's, it's ugly and it's, it's frightening in itself um, and it can really change us in the way that we do everyday things. So now that we've brought our fears before God, let's, let's see what God's will is for us. Um, how are we going to hold on to hope in a time of fear? Psalm 55, which spoke of that terror and horror and trembling, just a few verses later, says this, reading from verse 16. But I call to God, and the Lord saves me. Evening, morning and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. He ransoms me unharmed from the battle waged against me, even though many oppose me. God, who is enthroned forever, 
will hear them and afflict them. Men who will never change their ways and have no fear of God. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. That describes how morning and noon and night the psalmist cries out to God and God hears him. And though a battle is waged against him, God rescues him unharmed. That when we call to God, the Lord saves. Our cries of distress and terror and horror are not unheard. They're not just a bleak cry into a wilderness that disappear forever. They reach God and God hears and God answers our fears. Um, Psalm 27, 1 to 5 describes someone who is able to hold on to the hope in the face of his fear. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. This is the tale of a God who is our stronghold and our protection. In his care, we have nothing to fear. And I completely understand that the reality of that is, is very difficult to grasp and hold on to. So why not think about practical ways in which you might be able to hold on to those verses? Perhaps you could copy out some of those psalms or some of those verses um, and read them aloud to yourself as soon as you wake or when you go to bed or at different points throughout the day. You might want to write them down and stick them up next to places where you brush your teeth or next to the kitchen sink or somewhere where you will see them and be reminded. In the midst of your fear, God is there and he offers the protection and safety and security that nothing else in this world can offer. It might be that you uh, send these psalms to friends and you ask them to read them aloud to you at different intervals whenever you speak on the phone or they text them to you throughout the day. Psalm 91 is an incredible psalm of God's protection and love for us. Once we've acknowledged that our fear is real and our fear is founded at the moment in some very real things, it's also important to acknowledge that the safety and security that God offers us is very real. And Psalm 91 describes it in a beautiful way. So I'm going to read that as we close the day. Again, why not bring your own fears before God in this moment and offer them to him? Or pray this over someone else that you know in your life that's struggling with fear at the moment. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands 
so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra, and you will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honour him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation.